Welcome back to Smart Tech as we of course tackle digital payments in Uganda and of course we are looking at the transformation of digital payments in Uganda. What is the revolution? What's the structure of how we got to have digital payments in Uganda and how is it effective, effective in Uganda today? Now. Uh, of course, I'm still with Peter Senyonjo, the Sales Operation Manager of FaceApp, and I believe he's giving us deeper insights on how we can use such, you know, a system here in Uganda. Mm -hmm. Peter, this, this is just a very, very general question. Mm -hmm. I mean, before we had digital payments in Uganda, mm -hmm. what was the financial structure looking like? Before it was the financial structure, of financial industry was mainly dominated by commercial banks, I would say. Yeah. Later on, we saw microfinance coming in because yeah. of the demand and the changing yeah. economic environment. Yeah. But later on, there was a demand for, for people to make payments. Mm -hmm. The SMEs were growing, retail mm -hmm. businesses were growing. Yeah. So there was a demand for businesses to receive payments. Yes. And then there was some, we came up, many, many businesses came up with this idea of how can I improve my business processes, my internal processes, how do I just come up with a payment solution that can really speak to can help me solve my issues. So that's yes. how Pesa Power or other fintechs came in to bridge the gap, yes. to eliminate the cash and everything mm -hmm. and the, the issues that come with a lot of cash and the risks that come with a lot of cash. Yeah. So that's how the fintechs came in and started providing these digital payment solutions. Mm -hmm. That's how Pesa Power were able to come in. Well, but um, I, I believe Pesa Power. I actually, as I was telling you earlier, a story of how you know I, I got to know Pesa Power, I think, in the, in the, in the bucket of three years. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we did not have enough information of what Persapal was doing mm. and how it looked like. But you mentioned earlier, how, just tell us, you know, the, 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 how did it start? Okay. You know, how did Persapal start okay. and how did it actually, you know, uh, dominate? All right. We, when we joined, when we came into the market, yeah. we started with the Persapal app. It was basically, yes, yes. It was based about paying bills, paying TV. About that application, is yes. it still in existence? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, and, very, very. And now improved to... Very, very improved. You can, you can make bill payments, you can pay for your TV in the comfort of your home, yes, yes. through maybe debiting your card or your mobile money, so it's, it's still operational. Yeah. So we realized that there was a, a gap in the online payments, Yeah. especially the tour and travel companies. Okay. There was a gap, so we came in with the payments page, mm. you can just open up your website, yeah. open a tour and travel company, mm. on checkout, you can make a payment using your Visa, MasterCard, and mobile money. Yeah. Then we realized there was also potential in POS. People had cards, but most of them were just using it for the ATM with it draws. Yeah. So we always said, oh, we can bring our POS machines so that you can put them in business centers. People are able to pay using their cards. Yeah. So that's in summary, that's how we are able to penetrate the market and come up with all these different solutions and more are still coming. Talking about these solutions, what yes. are those innovative solutions or technologies mm -hmm. that are offered by PesaPal, unlike other financial you know, payment very, systems? Very good. Now, payment solutions is what we do. We have a very big number of payment solutions. Big one, number of payment solutions. Let's, let's talk yes, about One is uh, the four quote management system. Wow. You as a manager or a director of a fuel company or a petrol station, yeah. you don't need to be there physically to see whatever is happening, check the gauge and everything. This, this cash are doing what they are supposed to do. Mm -hmm. We give you an automated solution that gives you visibility of what is happening yeah. at your petrol station in the comfort of your home of your office. Okay. Then for two and travel companies, like I said, mm -hmm. before they would like share their bank details with their clients abroad and everything, that would bring in the trust issues. Yeah. But as of now, I can just log on to a website of any two and travel company, make a payment using the Pesa Power payments page, yeah. and then I make a, pay a payment to that two and travel company, safe and very convenient. Then the PDQ machines that are 4G enabled, very fast and very reliable. We penetrated the market with those machines. They are everywhere. A customer is able to walk in with a Visa or MasterCard, swipe on the machine and make a payment. Mm. Apart from cards, they can also use their mobile money, again on the PDQ machine. So any business having a Pesa Power machine, they're able to receive card payments and mobile money payments. Mm. Mm. Yes. Then for booking, booking uh, activity booking. Yeah. If say you, you run um, an event company, you're organizing an event, you have a show and everything, mm -hmm. someone is able to go into your website and book the specific activities they would like to enjoy when they come for your event. If you if you do organize uh, if maybe if you do organize uh, team building activities, I'm able to log onto your website, pick out whatever activity I would like to enjoy when I when I when I come for your services. Yeah. Then for hotels we have a reserve port. I'm seated somewhere in Europe and check out your hotel, see the rooms that are available, and select the room I want, and actually make payments. 
in the comfort of my home wherever I am yes. in the world. So we have so many products and they speak to exactly what our customers need. Now, those are some of the few. Peter, there could be quite a number of um, challenges that can come out with using you know, uh, digital payment systems. And one of the challenges I think I have noticed could be fraud. Now, how has PayPal been able to uh, mitigate such challenges? How do you, what kind of solutions do you have for issues like fraud, mm -hmm. issues like uh, misuse of customer data, mm -hmm. you know, uh, things like that. And mm -hmm. I, I, I believe, of course, there is a law that definitely is protecting mm -hmm. you, but then what solutions have you come up for such challenges? Mm -hmm. yeah. very, very good question. You know, these kind of payment platforms, you need to have a secure platform yeah. that can that can really protect the, the consumers that are using the service. Yeah. Now, internally, we have a team of uh, fraud, fraud prevention experts yeah. that are always online, mm -hmm. saving through the transactions that we receive as PaySafar. Mm -hmm. And apart from that, we use high, very high in data encryption technologies to sieve out and protect the consumer if the customer's information that is being run on all our services. Mm. So we protect all the financial information mm. that you feed into our system. Mm. Very high end and they, they've really done a very good job for us. So we've not been hit by any fraud or anything like that. Really? Yes. And then for BOU, BOU is always there to, to do the oversight. Yeah. Once we have that license, there are guidelines that you're supposed to follow. to follow. Yes, and before you actually, you can't just get that line just overnight. So. Mm. Those are some of the things that have really kept us secure and providing a very convenient service for our customers. Perfect, that's really good. Just I want to give you like after just a minute mm. to tell our viewers yes. your services as Pesa Pal, so right. they can clearly understand them and then we shall get back to our topic. All right, Pesa Pal, like I said, is a leading service payment service provider. We do provide online and in-store services. Mm. For online, we give we, we, we enable customers to make payments in the comfort of wherever they are. Mm. Then for on-site, the customer walks into a shop, walks into a petrol station, a bar, a hotel, or a restaurant, and they're able to swipe using their bank cards and make a payment. Mm. On top of that, they're also able to use their mobile money or the mobile world mm. to make payment to the businesses. So for someone to enjoy our services, we do onboard businesses that are registered with URSP, of course, set up is same day you can bring your company documents to our PesaPal offices and in one day you can walk out with your machine ready for service perfect now peter we understand that definitely PesaPal is also collaborating and working mm. with so many institutions like you had mentioned earlier yeah. but we just want to understand what is that comprehensive ecosystem that PesaPal is rotated with yes we we We've signed up uh, partnership agreements with uh, financial institutions. Yes. Remember, financial institutions, say banks, they are the issuers. Yeah. We are the acquirers. Yeah. So it's, there's a relationship between us there and them. There has to be a relationship. Of course, yes. And then the telecalls. Yeah. And actually, in this modern age, the strategy should be collaborative competition. Yeah. I don't need to kick you out of business. I just need to work with you so that we can go together. Yeah. So we've signed up with our commercial banks and yeah. the telecalls so that we can improve the service that we offer. Because these are our customers. Mm -hmm. and the ultimate objective is financial inclusion. Yeah. That's the ultimate objective. Yes. Because at the end of the day, mm. we want to enhance convenience exactly. for both businesses and also consumers at the same time. Exactly. So, um, are there platforms, e commerce platforms that you have been involved in, in as well? And yeah. then, is it possible for international payments to be done? Like, if someone is in Germany or something, mm. Pesapa, what's the reach internationally for Pesapa? What's the scope internationally? I also understand and mm. have noticed that, of course, you have mega branches in other countries in, mm. uh, around East Africa, Tanzania, mm. Kenya, mm. and um, where are the headquarters, by the way? Are they, are they Nairobi. Nairobi, yes. that's where the headquarters are. Yeah. Well, that's why that explains why MPESA is very fast <laughs> in the you know, Pesa Park. Yeah, but yes, what, what is that international kind Rich. of reach to be at that reach? So, very good. Now, you see, if I give you a payment page from Pesa Park, yeah. say you are, you are a tour operator here in UG, you can send it to anyone across the world, as long as they have a Visa card or MasterCard or American Express, they're able to make a payment from wherever they are, they are in the world. Yeah. So our reach is unlimited as long as the customer has that specific card that we accept on our platforms. So you are free to transact from anywhere. Can you explain the card, that specific card? Yes. All right. So as of now, we accept Visa, MasterCard and American Express on our online platforms. As of now, yes. But we are, we are, we are working out a solution to bring on more, more, more schemes on our platform. Wow. Um, basically, Peter, we understand uh, we have 
uh, organizations or businesses mm -hmm. that have not yet taken up or mm -hmm. adapted mm -hmm. to this kind of digital payment systems. Uh, what kind of strategy or what kind of advice? But I want you to speak to them. Those mm. who haven't adapted mm. to this kind of you know financial inclusion mm. because it's important that they adapt, mm. right? Mm. It's important that they start using such quick and effective systems or means of payment. Mm. But why is that they're not using? Uh, I want us to, want to tell us as a, or to the viewers and tell mm. them why are some organizations reluctant mm -hmm. or businesses reluctant to use such online payment systems? What is the issue? Uh, when you're in the market, there mm. you're, meeting so many, you're meeting so many clients mm. and I'm sure each client has their own perspective. Yes, so yes, yes. What, what are those issues that you get to hear about you know, people being reluctant on using such kind of digital payment systems. And mm. two, what would you tell them that, you know, could actually change their mind and say, you know what, this, this should be the thing, this should be the way to go. Because I believe with the increasing and emerging technologies that we are having in Uganda, mm. this should be the way to go. We have now artificial intelligence on board, oh, yeah. we have blockchain Very systems fast. on board, mm. we have quite a lot of technologies that are emerging mm. day in day. Mm. But then now you find that some businesses are still, are still behind. Mm -hmm. What would you tell them? And then before you tell them something, mm -hmm. please tell, tell, tell us what do you think is that reason as to why you know people are still reluctant to their business? Yeah, it's it's uh, largely about awareness. Yeah. Yes, we we the players in the sector. We need to drive more. We need to push out more information about these services. Yeah. There's someone there still running a business that is 100% cash based. 100%. Yes, and it's very, very risky. There are some efficiencies that they are missing out. There are some benefits that they are missing out. What kind of benefits? Yes. You know, if you're a business person and you're 100% running a cash based economy in your business, yeah. you're prone to operational errors from your cashiers from the persons receiving cash mm. the counterfeits and everything and then the big one mm. the robberies we've been seeing everything on the social media and everything mm. so one if you can minimize the number of cash transactions in your business mm. there are so many benefits that you get now the operational efficiencies that come with uh, eliminating cash transactions grow the business there are some expenses that you, you run away from. You don't need to have a, lot, a big number of cashiers. If you have a POS machine, it can take in as so many transactions that it can, exactly. other than having out of cashiers, receiving cash and everything, and so many entries. We have a dashboard, uh, a sort of reconciliation tool that we give out to our merchants. They're able to have this bit of whatever is happening on the PDQ and the online. So you don't need to employ so many cashiers and everything to, to, to be checking out on whatever is happening and doing the manual entries. Mm -hmm. We do integrations with supermarkets, hotels and everything. So we can integrate our system with your internal system to eliminate the manual inputs of that and everything. All this brings about efficiency in the business processes. Just so before you continue with, mm -hmm. you know, so you're saying the issue is lack of awareness? Yes, largely lack of awareness of these services. So there is no other issue that, you know, could actually hinder businesses to definitely adapt to such a system apart from the lack of awareness maybe there could be some like some trust issues in trust these platforms yeah. yes maybe there's some feedback that people got from some other companies and everything yeah. but if you try out a system that is tested and tried mm -hmm. that has well set out guidelines and processes on how they handle customer information and customer data mm -hmm. then you're, you're free to like i've said Pesa, we are working with the top-notch industries by the time you bring on board a top hotel five-star hotel mm -hmm and they trust your system and they use it internally, mm -hmm. trust me, there are certain checks that you have to go through to bring on board such a, such a customer. So for the SMEs, they can borrow it from the big, the big players that are using our services. The level of trust they have in us, they can just borrow it and they on board us. So the, the, you mentioned about there are certain checks that you must go through. Mm -hmm. that, what's that criteria you're talking about that you must actually you know, be successful in mm -hmm. to definitely get to work with a, a, a certain client? That criteria, those checks that you're feeling as best of all, what are those checks that you must make sure you're eligible now? All right. Mm -hmm. Now, for, for, for online transactions to happen, there are so many security data security companies that you have to sign up for, for Visa to accept yeah. their cards to be run on your online platform. Yeah. So we are accredited. Mm -hmm. Then locally, we are registered by the Central Bank of Uganda. Actually, we are the first PSP to get a license. 
So by the time we get that license from Bank of Uganda, and, and there are other, you know, of course they are there. There are many, but I'm saying we are the first to get to get a license. Exactly. So we presented our credentials and we are accredited by the central bank. And I'm just, I'm just wondering how others are being operating now. <laughs> yeah, before, like you know, the economy is growing and everything. The sector is growing. So yeah. before, fintechs were not really regulated directly by the central bank. Yeah. But right now, every fintech has to be regulated by the first central bank. You have to present your credentials, or your internal processes, and everything. Yeah. And good enough. We presented everything and we are cleared and we are the first PSP to get that license. Perfect. What's the future of fintech in Uganda? The, the future is bright. Given the numbers, the numbers are growing and they speak a lot about what is yet to happen in the future. There is a lot of people have embraced mobile payments, digital payments. Internet penetration has grown, mobile, mobile money penetration has grown also, and then connectivity is improving. The telecos are working so hard to improve on connectivity. So even the areas that I've mentioned where I have some internet issues and everything, they are working very hard to push because they know this is where the business is. And fintechs are still entering the market to improve service and provide the quality service that our customers are looking out for. Perfect. Wow, that's really very impressive. I yes. just want to just have something in my mind that is wrinkling there. Mm. It's about your model as a power. Yes. What business model are you using as a fintech company? Yes. Now, we, we, we reach out, to, we, we work with uh, a broad number of customers. Yeah. We do work with uh, small businesses, work with SMEs, and then we work with uh, corporate, big, big corporate I companies. I if you work with some SMEs, because these are people that need this exactly, exactly. And actually, SMEs are running our, our economy, basically. Mm -hmm. So we have, we have platforms that enable them like access our services. That's why our services are convenient and they are very affordable. Because yeah. if our service was very expensive, trust me, you wouldn't be seeing us everywhere like you said. So we make our service so affordable for everyone yeah. to be uh, to be accommodated by everyone. So the model is uh, structured. It's all inclusive, I yeah. would say. That's why we've been able to dominate the market. Yeah. We don't see, as long as you present your documents and everything and you're able to go through the process, trust me, shall give you the service. So what's your target market exactly? Our target market we do we do we look at retail yeah. largely and hospitality. So any business that falls in that category, hospitality and retail, they are they are good to go. So actually, when you mentioned earlier that you know Pesapal has been collaborating with the government, mm -hmm. are there interventions that the government has put up to ensure that they, there is what we call the digital payment infrastructure mm -hmm. in place? And if there is, uh, are there any that you can you know, mention for us? Yes, uh, of recent, uh, the parliament signed a, an, uh, an act yeah. that regulates uh, financial technologies. Recently? Yes. Then, uh, see, like in the budget, the government is pushing more of the national backbone that is going to be driving internet even across the country. So there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of government initiatives and work that they're putting into this uh, this kind of activity. Especially that they may not be doing it directly with PESAPA, mm -hmm. but there's so many interventions that they're running with. Bank of Uganda is pushing for financial inclusion. That's why banks are are really doing agent banking and everything. Mm -hmm. So once for us, we we ride on what. What other players do, we, also, we are also able to benefit from the economies of scale. If banks are scaling, that means Pesa Power will be scaling. If government is doing something around the clock to improve connectivity, infrastructure, and everything, and the regulations, then Pesa Power is also benefiting from that. Wow, so because I, I, I assume you give us an example. For example, let's talk about Kampala here. Mm -hmm. What infrastructures have, have, have been put in place for maybe for people, people let's talk about the people in the central region. Mm -hmm. What infrastructures have been put in place? Because well, why I'm asking this mm. because first of all we understand your role in providing affordable and convenience, you know, secure financial services. Mm. That is okay. Mm. But then what infrastructures are, are, are in place or what solutions are in place that quickly businesses can adapt to? Good. Uh, the infrastructure basically I'm mainly talking about I would say the internet connectivity yes. in the central. Internet. Now through UCC, of course, government puts up guidelines yeah. that telecom A B C D. These are the, this is the bare minimum quality of data or internet connectivity around this place. So we are able to write on such initiatives by the, by the government. They could, they, maybe they are not so direct, we, like geared to PESAPA, but through the regulations and everything that they are doing around the clock, through other players, we are able to write on, the, on, the, on those, uh, those are interventions. Perfect. Now, uh, my last question to you would be, as we wind up uh, our, our show, we, I, I would definitely want to understand the importance of digital payments in promoting financial inclusion. Mm -hmm. Do you think that when we talk about promoting financial inclusion in Uganda, mm -hmm. do you think that digital payments could be the number one way or strategy of promoting financial inclusion in Uganda? Or there are other means of promoting this? Yeah, 
digital payments can lead the way and of course they are leading the way mm -hmm. now assuming like you're a business person mm -hmm. i'll give a typical example of someone a country say you sell pineapple yeah. and you want to sell your stock to a certain supermarket in kampala mm -hmm. you either have to load them on a truck take them to kampala then go back home with cash now there are so many risks involved in there yeah. but if you embrace the digital payments you can just send an invoice to the supermarket it drops into their email they click put their card details and make a payment mm -hmm. so for you just deliver so the risks of carrying cash risk of theft robber and everything they are minimized mm -hmm. so if they look if the people can embrace this technology if they can realize the benefits that come with eliminating a lot of cash usage mm -hmm. in their daily transactions mm -hmm. it can be good then for the consumers you would like to go to a supermarket mm -hmm. spend as much less less time to transact and then walk away maybe avoid the jam and everything but if you have to remove the cash then you, you have to count the card and they give you a lot of coins and everything so to mention the coins but if you have your card i can just run your card on the machine just get your seat and then but, you move out it saves time and money what is the goal of, of all this really is, is it to prevent people from you know <laughs> moving around with hard cash and you know to not make payments of course easily with you know electronic electronic uh, means but what is the goal like i really want to understand what is the whole goal of Oh, good. We, we are not, it's not like we are telling people to run away from cash. But Clinton, no data is very important. Yeah. And actually, right now, data is an asset. Very, very much. Mm? Yeah. So there are so many transactions that are happening in the economy that aren't registered anywhere in any financial system or anything. Yeah. The government will be interested in knowing <clears throat> how many people are using this platform. Yeah. The National Bureau of Standards would like to know how many people buy certain items from this store, yeah. certain items from this petrol station. Yeah. The government will be interested in other players will be interested in that data. That data can speak a lot, it can be used for planning and yeah. even the, the businesses can use it to model out whatever they want to model out. So if you do inform, if you run an informal economy yeah. and the transactions are not recorded anywhere in the systems, yeah. you're leaving out out of data. Well, that would be very important in decision making and policy formulation. So it's good for us to record our transactions, and the best way for us to do it is that to embrace digital payments. Peter can keep you here all day, by the way. I can keep you <laughs> here all day. I can keep you here all day, but then that, that won't be able to be possible. Know, but yeah. then, as we can wind up, I just want you to talk to our viewers and give them a message for mm. those that haven't adapted mm. to pesa power kind of system, and mm. especially, let alone to pesa power, but those who have not adapted to the digital payment system, this online payment system, mm -hmm. what is the importance of adapting to such systems for their businesses? Because we want to, uh, we want to drive business you know, to that kind of adaptability. So, uh, speak to them. All right, to our dear viewers. Now, for an economy to grow, there are drivers, and one of them is digital payments. Mm -hmm. If you want to realize efficiency in your business processes, you have to embrace digital payments. Mm -hmm. If you want to enjoy the economies of scale, I'll give an example. Someone who comes to a supermarket or a bar and they want to make a purchase, they are limited to what their car speaks. If I have 10K, I can only spend as much as that 10K speaks. Mm -hmm. But if I have a card, assuming it's a credit card, I have even a lot of money to spend that actually it's not on my account if i have a debit card i have access to my to the funds on my account yeah. so if you embrace the digital payments yeah. there's a way they drive consumption at an economic level and at a business level so for any business that is looking out to grow their business to improve their internal processes to achieve that level of efficiency that will move their business to the next level it's high time they embrace the digital payments thank you so much peter You're welcome great for our viewers thank you so much for being a part of the smart tech show and for this week's episode definitely we have kept you in your chairs uh listening to how digital transformation in terms of online payment systems and online payment uh, kind of you know systems that can actually help us to upscale our businesses and make it even more efficient for your business catch up uh, with this, of course, with Peter, mm -hmm. who is definitely giving us more insights on how PesaPal, one of the organizations in Uganda that is already implementing those digital financial inclusion systems here in Uganda, and definitely they are operating in other countries as well. So they are legible enough for your business. Catch them live on their websites and also social media handles. But apart from that, we are Smart24 TV, of course, catch, up, catch us up live on every Friday as we bring you the Smart Tech Show, which, of course, gives you the latest advice advancements in technology and we have so much more watch out just stay connected stay smart thank you